Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Creative Proteomics channel. Today, we will introduce several techniques to detect protein protein interaction. While many proteins can function independently, most proteins interact with other proteins to perform biological processes. Therefore, the study of protein protein interactions is of great importance. Today, we will introduce common research techniques such as co immunoprecipitation. East 2 hybrid, GST pull down, and far western blot to study protein interactions. First, we'll introduce co immunoprecipitation. It's a classic method based on the specificity of antigen antibody interactions. Co immunoprecipitation can be used to detect the interaction between two known proteins, or use known proteins to find unknown proteins that interact with them. Co-immunoprecipitation experiments can be used to determine whether two target proteins are bound in the body, identify a new role for a particular protein, or isolate and obtain the interaction protein complex in its natural state. When cells are lysed, many of the protein-protein interactions that exist in intact cells are preserved. If there is an XY protein complex in the cell, an X, or the bait protein, is immunoprecipitated with an anti-X antibody. Then the protein Y, or the target protein, bound to X is also precipitated. Therefore, anti-X antibody is added to the cell lysate to precipitate protein X. And then Western blot is used to detect the presence of protein Y in the precipitate. The presence of XY protein complex in the cell then indicates the presence of protein XY interactions. The process of co-immunoprecipitation mainly includes the following steps. 1. Protein sample preparation. Protein samples are usually obtained from cell lysis. There are usually two types of co-immunoprecipitation experiments. One is to verify endogenous protein interaction, and the other for non-endogenous protein interaction. Endogenous interaction refers to the interaction of two proteins in the cell. That is, the two proteins are transfected into the same cell for expression by means of co-transfection of the plasmid. After the expression is completed, the cells are collected and lysed to obtain a protein sample. Now endogenous interactions between two proteins occur outside of the cells. The animal and plant tissues and organs containing the target proteins are pretreated and cell lysed to obtain a cell lysate. And then a bait protein, usually obtained by recombinant expression purification, is added to the cell lysate to obtain a protein sample. 2. Precipitated decoy protein. Magnetic bead conjugated antibodies are added to the sample, which bind to the decoy protein. The beads are pulled down by magnets, and the decoy proteins are precipitated. If there is a target protein that interacts with the bait protein, will also precipitate. If there's no specific antibody for the bait protein, you can tag the bait protein and then use the labeled antibody to precipitate the protein. 3. SDS page, western blot, or mass spectrometry. Once the precipitate is obtained, it's necessary to verify the presence of interacting proteins in the precipitate. The protein complex is isolated by SDS page and then western blot is used to detect the presence of target protein. If the molecular weight of the target protein is known, SDS page can be directly used to detect the presence of the target protein. In addition, mass spectrometry can also be used to directly analyze and detect precipitated proteins. The EAST-2 hybrid system, also known as the protein trap capture system, was created by Fields and Song based on the characteristics of eukaryotic transcription regulation. The EAST-2 hybrid system can quickly and directly analyze the interactions between known proteins and find and isolate ligands that interact with known proteins. This method is widely used to study the antigen-antibody interactions, discover new proteins and new functions of proteins screen drug interaction sites and effects of drugs on protein interactions, and establish genomic protein linkage maps. 
The establishment of the East 2 hybrid system is based on the understanding of the eukaryotic transcriptional regulation process. Gene transcription in eukaryotes requires the involvement of transcriptional activators. Eukaryotic transcriptional activation factors contain two different domains, the DNA binding domain, or DNA-BD, and the DNA transcription activation domain, or AD. These two domains can be separated independently. The functions do not affect each other. BD and AD alone cannot activate the transcription. Only when the two are sufficiently close in space can the complete transcriptional activator activity be achieved, enabling the downstream genes to be transcribed. Based on this principle, an East 2 hybrid system can be designed. Two proteins to be studied, protein X and protein Y, are constructed into fusion plasmids with BD and AD domains. The constructed plasmids are transferred to homozygous yeast cells for expression. If there is no interaction between the two proteins, the downstream genes or the reporter genes will not be transcribed for expression. If there is an interaction between the two proteins, BD and AD are spatially close and the downstream reporter genes is transcribed. By judging whether the reporter gene is expressed or not, the interaction between the two proteins can be determined. So how to determine whether there is an interaction? Reporter genes are commonly used as nutritional markers such as HIS3, URA3, LACZ, and ADE2. The corresponding host bacteria are labeled defective cells that must be grown in a medium containing the nutrient markers. Thus, when interacting proteins are present, reporter gene expression is activated so that they can be cultured without nutrient markers to verify the presence of interactions. The third is the fluorescence resonance energy transfer technology, or the FRET technology. In 1948, the theory of FRET was first proposed, which can measure the intermolecular interactions within a distance of 1 to 6 nanometer. In 1967, this theory was experimentally verified, and the distance of 1 to 6 nanometer was called an optical ruler. In the early 1980s, FRET technology was successfully applied to the study of protein structure. FRET can be combined with a variety of advanced technologies and methods, such as electron microscopy and X-ray diffraction, to promote the development of detection methods in molecular biology. FRET is a physical process to detect the interaction between molecules. This method is suitable for verifying the existence of known molecular interactions under normal physiological conditions of cells. The detection principle of this method is as follows. X and Y proteins are fused with D and A fluorescent proteins, respectively. D and A are a pair of fluorescent substances, which are called donor and acceptor. When the X fusion protein was excited with 430 nanometer of purple light, it can produce blue fluorescence at 490 nanometer. Similarly, when we use 490 nanometer blue light to excite a white fusion protein, it can produce yellow fluorescence at 530 nanometer. When there is no interaction between proteins X and Y, or the spatial distance between the two is greater than 10 nanometer, fusion proteins X and Y are detected by corresponding fluorescence. If there is an interaction between proteins X and Y, or the space distance between the two should be less than 10 nanometer. The fusion protein X is excited with purple light, and the blue light generated by the fusion protein X will be absorbed by the fusion protein Y, resulting in yellow fluorescence. At this time, the presence of blue fluorescence will not be detected in the cell because energy is transferred from the X fusion protein to the Y fusion protein. Bimolecular fluorescent complementary is a protein-based complementary technology that can be used to detect protein interactions in vivo or in vitro. The principle of this method is as follows. 
the fluorescent protein is cut at a suitable site to form two non-fluorescent polypeptides, Vn and Vc. When these two fragments are co-expressed intracellularly or mixed in vitro, they cannot spontaneously assemble into a complete fluorescent protein. Even when the excitation light of the fluorescent protein is excited, no fluorescence can be generated. The two peptides are fused to the bait protein and the capture protein. If the bait protein and the capture protein can interact, then the two incomplete fluorescent reporter protein fragments will be close to each other to form an active fluorescent protein again. When the excitation light of the fluorescent protein is excited, fluorescence can be generated. Finally, the presence of fluorescence can be observed using a fluorescent microscope to determine whether there is interaction between the bait protein and the capture protein. Advantages of bimolecular fluorescent complementary technology Flexible can be used for in vivo and in vitro interaction studies. Fast and intuitive The interaction results can be directly observed under the microscope. Wide applicability this system has been successfully applied to different host cells, such as animals, plants, fungi, and bacteria. Clean background and high sensitivity. The verification results only needs to detect the presence or absence of fluorescence, and the background is clean and high in sensitivity. Ability to detect weak and transient interactions. Low requirements for instruments. Controllable cost. Relatively simple data processing. Disadvantages of bimolecular fluorescent complementary technology. Sensitive to temperature. When the temperature is high, it is difficult for the fragments to complement each other to form a complete fluorescent protein, which will negatively affect interaction of the research cells under physiological conditions. Information is lagging and cannot be observed in real time. To detect fluorescence, this system needs to complement the two fluorescent protein fragments to form a complete active protein. And the fluorescent protein autocatalyzes the two processes. The process often takes several minutes to several hours, so observing the fluorescent signal lags behind the protein interaction and cannot be observed in real time. Tandem Affinity Purification, or TAP, it's a technology that can quickly study protein interactions in vivo. After two-step specific affinity purification, proteins that have real interaction with the target protein under physiological conditions can be quickly obtained. The TAP method was originally used in yeast. Because of its versatility, high efficiency, high purity, and low false positive characteristics, it has been rapidly developed. So far, it has been successfully used in the study of interactions with many other organisms. The TAP tag originally designed was mainly composed of two IgG binding domains of Staphylococcus aureus protein A and a comodulin binding peptide, separated by a TEV proteinase cleavage site in between. First round of affinity purification. Affinity purification was performed using an IgG affinity column. Prot A was tightly bound to the affinity column. An unbound heterogeneous protein was washed away, then digested with TEV proteinase to obtain CBP fusion protein. Second round of affinity purification. The CBP fusion protein obtained after digestion is mixed with an affinity column coupled with calmodulin for a second round of affinity purification. In the presence of calcium ions, CBP binds tightly to calmodulin. Using EGTA-containing eluent for gentle illusion, high-purity target protein can be obtained. If there is an interacting protein in the target cells, the target protein complex can be obtained. The order of the two rounds of affinity purification is to first use an IgG affinity column for purification, and then use a calmodulin coupled affinity column for purification. If the order of purification is reversed, there may be problems with TEV enzyme contamination. 
Next, we will introduce GST pull-down. GST pull-down technology uses the affinity of GST for glutathione, or GSH, coupled beads. The GST fusion protein is combined with glutathione coupled spheres, and the protein interacting with the GST fusion protein is purified from the protein mixture. This method can identify unknown proteins that interact with known proteins, and can also identify whether there are interactions between two known proteins. GST pull-down can be used to determine possible interactions between two known proteins and find unknown molecules that interact with known proteins. The principles of GST pull-down Recombinant technology is used to fuse the probe protein with GST, and a fusion protein binds to GSH immobilized on the carrier through GST. When a protein or target protein that interacts with the fusion protein passes through the chromatography column or is mixed with this solid phase complex, it can be separated by adsorption. Far Western blot is a molecular biology method for detecting protein-protein interactions. It can verify the interactions between known proteins or analyze the interactions between known and unknown proteins. Far Western blot is similar to Western blot. For Western blot, primary antibodies and HRP-labeled secondary antibodies are bound to visualize the proteins on the membrane. For far western blot, the target protein is fixed on the PVDF or NC membrane, and the bait protein is used as a probe to detect the target protein on the membrane. And then a specific antibody is incubated and detected for analysis interaction between the target protein and the bait protein. The far western blot has the following main steps. 1. Gel electrophoresis. Proteins of different sizes are separated by gel electrophoresis. 2. Transfer film. After the proteins in the samples are separated on the gel, the proteins are transferred from the gel to the membrane. The purpose of this step is to attach the protein to the surface of the membrane, making the protein easier to detect. 3. Blocking. After the transfer, the entire membrane is generally closed with heterogeneous protein to block nonspecific binding sites. Commonly used blocking agents are skim milk powder and BSA. It should be noted that blocking agents may cross-react or disrupt the protein interaction to be studied in other ways. An appropriate blocking agent needs to be determined based on experience. 4. Probe incubation. The bait protein is co-incubated with the blocked membrane to bind the bait protein to the interacting protein on the NC membrane and the unbound bait protein is washed away after incubation. The higher the purity of the bait protein, the higher the success rate of the experiment. Advantages of far western blot Good experimental repeatability Analysis of multiple tissue samples simultaneously Molecular weight of interacting proteins can be determined immediately. Disadvantages of far western blot the experimental process contains multiple watching steps, so weak interactions are difficult to detect. Interactions are difficult to detect if the quantities of the target protein is low in tissue. Protein denaturation and renaturation may exist in experiments, and interactions that depend on natural structures cannot be detected. Creative proteomics provides the above techniques to detect protein-protein interactions. Please contact us for any suggestions or service requests. Thank you for your time.